Okay, so what if this whole time Apollo Cruz was the Nigerian prince that kept emailing us about that money? Hmm. What's going on boys and girls? It's your man Big Hero Chris here back at you again with your Friday Night Smackdown review. Now you already know the drill, you know how this goes. Leave me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Also if you're new, welcome. How you doing? How's your day going so far? Everything cool? Um, so Smackdown. Uh, not really too much to talk about this week. There was only a handful of things that really stood out to me on this episode, so I'm not gonna break it down segment by segment, you know, part by part, all of that. I'm just gonna talk about it's kind of the, um, the main things that really stood out to me. Uh, one of the main things is Apollo Crews. He's he's a bad guy now. He's officially a bad guy. Um, he came out with, with some new gear on, um, embrace, embracing his Nigerian side, coming out with um. Nigerian colors on his tights, coming out with the long tights with the um, Nigerian colors on it, and he also had his scarf with him. And um, before his match, he started he gonna cut this promo talking about how he felt disrespected by Biggie over these past few weeks, about how Biggie told him to go back to catering, and um, how that really bothered him. Yeah, how he felt disrespected by that, and um, he told his story about how he's um. Uh, Nigerian royalty, how his father is royalty, how his grandfather is royalty, and um, how if um, Big E had spoke to it and any of his father or his grandfather like that, it would be it would be a wrap for him. It would just be curtains, you know. Um, he said something about his grandfather would say make him feel the steel or taste the steel or something like that, and tying back to how um, last week Apollo beat up Big E with the steel steps, and um, there was even this one part where um, he was talking about his grandfather and uh, he kind of said it in a Nigerian accent. I don't know if that's how he really talks for real for real um, or if he was just kind of invoking his grandfather or just kind of just playing off how his grandfather talked, uh, his real thick Nigerian accent. Um, anyway, um, him and Nakamura had a match on Apollo Crews 1. And, to me, it's kind of funny how a few a few weeks ago, when everyone thought Nakamura was going to get this big giant push and how he's going to be more in the main event picture, you fast forward all this time now, and do we wish do we still feel the same? Are we still feeling that? Because I'm not. I mean, I like Nakamura. I'm a big fan of his, but it doesn't feel like he's still going to get that same push. Um, that same main event push because he, he, he was the man of that gone match a few weeks ago but now he's getting beat by Apollo Crews and understandably so because you have to build up Apollo um, he, he recently turned heel you're trying to establish him as a dominant bad guy and unfortunately it came at the expense of Nakamura I mean I don't know I don't know where this leads Nakamura um, if he's going to be in the Intercontinental title feud with um, Apollo and Big E, or it's just going to be Big E and Apollo going at it, going, um, going at it for the title. I don't know, but um, it just kind of sucks that it seems that um, Nakamura is kind of the casualty in all this. Even though we're building up, or they're building up, I'm not doing anything, but they're building up Apollo as his monster heel, as his big tough bad guy. And um, speaking more about Apollo. It's cool that we're seeing more of an attitude, we're seeing an actual character because for the longest time Apollo was just your typical standard athletic smiling big black guy because he's an athletic, he's an athletic dude, um, he, he can do some amazing things in the ring, he has a nice smile so of course you want to showcase that off but that was it, that was, that was all he was, he was just a athletic smiling dude. So now it's cool to see him with more of a character. It's cool to see him with more of an edge to him. So yeah, all for um, Nigerian Prince Apollo Cruz. And I still think he's the guy that's, 
that was sending out the emails about the money. If you were, if you were watching this apollo, please hit my email, um, because I like money. Okay, so next is the very first edition of a new segment on my videos going forward called Check That Drip, featuring Seth Rollins. Alright, so Seth Rollins made his return a couple weeks ago, and since he's made his return, he's cut some promos, but the main thing with him isn't what he's saying, but what he's wearing. So... I don't know if this is his new line of supervillain gear or whatever because dude's coming out dressed like a straight up supervillain. So um, the first week he um, made his return and cut a promo, my guy came out dressed in a um, just all leather everything. He had on a leather jacket, a um, leather button down shirt. I think even the tire was leather. Um, if I could rank his drip on this one, I will give it five super villains out of five purely because you have to be a brave man to come out with all that leather and still look so cool because i was burning up just looking at this man i mean come on now the following week seth came out looking like the um he came out looking like the magic carpet from aladdin um he looked like a cross between a Preacher that just hit the lottery and a magic carpet. So, yeah, I'll, I'll have to give him four carpets on that fit. Which brings us up to date. We now are at this week's outfit. And my guy didn't let me down. He came out all white suit, looking like Colonel Sanders. Looking like he was about to tell us his um, herbs and spices secrets. Um, he gets on the mic talking about how... Last week, he uh, sent a letter to corporate complaining about whatever, and then before he can even finish his speech, Cesaro comes out. Now, Cesaro's pissed off because a couple weeks ago, Seth attacked him for not, um, just for not, for not being a good friend, I guess. That's what Seth was, Seth was feeling. And um, right before um, Cesaro was about to jump him again, or jump him this week, Seth was like, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, listen. I, look, we can work together on this. We can come together. You and I, we can work together, man. You and me, we can take over. I can help you find that edge. You can be the guy around here. You would have won the Elimination Chamber this past Sunday if you wouldn't listen to me. And and as he's speaking, even before he can finish his, um, finish his little sermon, Cesaro swings him and swings him and swings him. And it was hilarious to me. I've watched this clip on YouTube like 52 times already. And what made it so funny to me was the fact that while Cesaro was swinging Seth, Seth was still holding on to the microphone and you can hear him yelling, ah, and then Cesaro stopped and, and Seth was like, stop, stop, put me down. And then Cesaro started swinging him again. He's like, ah, and his jacket flies out. His, his jacket flies off and it's just hilarious. And then Seth, he's wobbling around, he's looking dizzy and Cesaro just hits him with the uppercut. This part was, this, this segment was just hilarious. Uh, I'm probably going to watch it again after just talking about it. Um, oh, I forgot to rank his fit. I forgot to rank Seth's fit. Um, what did I say? I said it came out looking like Colonel Sanders. So I'm going to give this one three and a half buckets of chicken. Um, but yeah, overall entertaining segment. I I laughed. It's, it's hilarious. If you get a chance, check it out. Just watch it on YouTube. <laughs> Speaking of new segments. We have another new segment by me called Whose Man's Is This featuring your boy and mine, Reginald. So, um, that's a quick we run. Um, we have Bianca Belair finally announcing who she's going to face at WrestleMania. And, um, they made a, they made, they did a good, good job of making a big deal of, of it. Um, he had Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville in the ring, um, hyping up. Hyping up, the, um, hyping up the decision, they um, showed a video package highlighting Asuka and showing her off as um, the Raw Women's Champion. And then of course she has the um, video hyping up Sasha Banks, hyping her up as the um, SmackDown Women's Champion. And then Bianca comes out and uh, as she's getting ready to make her um, make her decision, whose man is this? Reginald. 
he comes out again, and it's like, and, uh, the thing is, I actually like Reginald as a character. I'm intrigued by Reginald, but it's like, who, why? why? Why do you keep coming out? Because you're supposed to be with Carmelo. Is he not with Carmelo? You don't even see Carmelo on this episode. He's out again, hyping up Sasha Banks, talking about how he, Bianca can't beat Sasha. And then, of course, Sasha Banks comes out. And then she gets in Reginald's face and she's like, listen, I told you before, don't speak for me. I'm the boss and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then Bianca makes a decision. She picks Sasha. And this, this is awesome. This is the decision we were expecting. Um, and, I, and when I say we, I mean we as wrestling fans. This is the decision that we were expecting Bianca to make. Um, and it's historic because this is the first time that uh, two African American, African American females are going to be in one of the main events at, at a WrestleMania fighting for a, a, a championship. In this case, the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. Um, so you have history inside of history because you have that part. And then how does Bianca Belair get to this point? She became the first African American female to win the um, women's Ro the women's Royal Rumble. So yeah, history inside of history. It's gonna be epic. Um, I'm ready for it. I hope Bianca Belair wins. I expect. I mean, I like Sasha Banks, but I feel like it's Bianca Belair's time. Like this is the perfect way to just wrap everything up. Um, this is how you build her as a star. I mean, she's already a star now, but this is how you really build her up as a star. You have um have her win the Rumble, just have her with Dominic week after week. And then at WrestleMania, you have um, her beat Sasha. And who knows? Who knows? Um, who knows how um, Reginald is going to tie in? Maybe he, um, maybe they, her, him, and um, Sasha finally can link up and they become a unit. Um, Carmella, I don't know where she is. And can we just put a missing person, a missing person's picture up for Carmella because she wasn't here? Um, but yeah, maybe um, Reginald just links up with Sasha Banks. She, Sasha Banks. Turns heel for real, for real, because oftentimes you will see Sasha come out and she's arrogant, she's cocky, but that's her character. She's the boss, you know. Her whole persona is I'm the boss, I'm the best, I'm number one, I'm the women's division, but she's a babyface, a good guy. So it would make more sense if you just you know, just turn her heel and just have her just go full on boss mode. It'll be boss time all the time. But yeah, um, is is tribal chief time he's, he's the man he's he is smackdown he smackdown needs roman reigns his words because of course every show every um friday night smackdown starts off with roman reigns because he's the champion he's the tribal chief head of the table you already know all the monikers he's the um, he's the guy so he comes out at the beginning of the show he's talking about how um at the elimination chamber his night was ruined by edge because he just defeated, um, Roman just defeated Daniel Bryan after his Elimination Chamber match. And his moment was ruined by Edge because Edge came out and he speared him. Um, making his intentions known that he is going to be at, at WrestleMania is going to be Roman versus Edge. And Roman kind of flips. So the past few weeks you have Roman saying, listen, you need Edge, you need to pick me to be the main event at WrestleMania. So what does Edge do? He picks Roman to be the main event of WrestleMania. And then Roman being Roman, he flips it and he's like, all right, so I'm gonna give you another opportunity to not pick me because look, you're a father, you're a husband, you have a family. I don't wanna hurt you, kind of making it look like he's this caring guy, like he cares about Edge's well-being. So it's like, listen, you don't want these problems. You don't want these problems, you don't want this smoke. Don't pick me, just pick somebody else. Anybody else, don't pick me. And then as Roman speaking, Daniel Bryan comes out and he's like, listen, man, you're, you're a coward because I just got done at the Elimination Chamber. I fought from the beginning to end. I was the last man standing at the Elimination Chamber match. You come out, you whoop me, you give me, uh, what, what did Roman call me? He said it was um the most exciting ass whooping of 2021 or something like that. And, and Daniel Bryan's like, look, man, you're a coward. Like, you, you did all that. And I went through this match. Like, I need another shot. I need a shot at you at Fastlane. And then Jimmy Uso gets on the mic. He's like, look, man, if you want to get through Roman, get to Roman, 
you gotta go through me. I'm I'm the right hand man. I'm main event Jay Uso. So the match is made for the main event. Jay Uso versus Danny Bryan. And if Danny Bryan can beat Jay, then it'll be Danny Bryan versus Roman at Fastlane. So the match happens and um it ends in a double count out, which means that um at this time um Danny Bryan's not gonna get his match. But um I'm re and I'm recording this on a Saturday, so I um, got to watch Talking Smack a little bit earlier and um Daniel Bryan was on Talking Smack talking to Paul Heyman saying, Listen, I want Ro I want Roman at fast line. And Paul went, Look, if you can beat Jay next week, next Friday on SmackDown, then you'll get your match at fast line. But if you don't beat Jay, you have to acknowledge Roman Reigns as the head of the table. You have to acknowledge Roman Reigns as the tribal chief. And you have to acknowledge Roman Reigns as the best wrestler. And Daniel Bryan agrees to this, but he throws in a little twist of his own. He says, all right, I'm going to do all this, but it has to be in a steel cage match. It, me and Jay next week, SmackDown, steel cage match. And if he beats me, I'll, I'll do all those things. I'll acknowledge Roman Reigns, all of that. But if I beat Jay, then it's going to be me and Roman at Fastlane for the um, Universal Championship. And, um, yeah, man. Um, I'm ready for next week to see what goes on next week on SmackDown. Um, steel cage match. So, I'm kind of going either one or two ways with um, with this. On um, the one hand, I wouldn't mind seeing Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns wrestle again at Fastlane. That would be pretty dope to me. But you know that Roman is going to win and he's going to go on to WrestleMania to face Edge. So, my thing is what I wouldn't mind seeing, which this may or may not happen, but excuse me, what I wouldn't mind seeing at Fastlane instead of the match between Daniel Bryan and Edge, or forgive me, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns, how about have it be, okay, so you have the Steel Cage match next week on SmackDown, and of course there's going to be shenanigans, right, so um, shenanigans take place, but on this time, Jimmy Uso makes his return, he comes in and um, he kind of screws up the match, and then of course you have Edge come out and then Roman comes out of course but then who should return but Christian Christian comes in even out the eyes so now at Fastlane you have Edge Christian and Daniel Bryan taking on the Usos and Roman Reigns in a six-man tag match that way it's not like okay it's going to be Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns it's the match itself will be good but you know Roman's going to win now you have an interesting twist on it you have the participants between Roman and Edge kind of getting their hands on each other a little bit but not really too much and then you have the return of the Usos and you have the added bonus of the Usos facing off against Edge and Christian so no, those are my thoughts that's what I think should happen will it happen probably not I don't know but um what do you guys think let me know in the comment section below what do you guys think what do you guys think about um this week's episode of Smackdown what do you think is going to happen at Fastlane? What do you think is going to happen next week in the Steel Cage match? Um, yeah, man, let me know. Of course, like I said before, if you're new to the channel, if, you're, if you like what you see, man, if you if you like hanging out with me, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And let you know when I am post more videos so we can hang out some more and all that fun jazz. Um, leave me a thumbs up. Yeah. Um, that's it, man. Until we meet again, peace.